It's the magic of math here, and today we're discussing probability models in our lesson. Let's begin by reviewing our lesson objectives. You, the student, will use a probability model to find the probability of an event. You will also create probability models. Here's the question I'd like you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson. How can you use a probability model to compare the different probable outcomes? Let's begin by reviewing what is a probability model. A probability model is a mathematical description listing all possible outcomes of an event and their corresponding probabilities. We have a spinner here that has four equally sized sections, four different colors. A probability model would be this table. It lists all the different colors that are possible when you spin the spinner and their probability of their outcomes. So there's four different outcomes possible. One of the four is pink, one of the four is blue, one of the four is yellow, and one of the four is green. So you could make a probability model in this table like this using probability written as a fraction. You could also do it where your probability was written as a decimal, or you could do it as probability written as a percent. I guess the typical way I like to do it is by decimal because it's easiest to compare the different probable outcomes as a decimal. All right, let's create a probability model together. We're going to determine the probabilities of the spinner landing on each color. So we're going to start by looking at pink. We can see that this spinner is divided into eight equal sections. So our denominator, our whole possible outcomes is eight. We want to know how many of those eight are pink. I can see that one, two, three of the sections of the spinner are pink. So our probability is three out of eight. So I'm going to leave this as a fraction because it doesn't really go to a decimal very nicely. It's a three digit decimal. So we're going to just leave it three eighths. Blue. When we look at blue, still going to have eight possible outcomes, and this time only one of our sections is blue. So we have a one in eight chance or a probable outcome of spinning and it landing on blue. When we think about green, we still have eight different outcomes. And when we count the green sections, we have one, two, three, four of our eight sections are green. And we can simplify that to be one half. So we can say that the probability of spinning and landing on green is one out of two or one half. If we left this as four eighths, we could compare them more easily and we know that it's more likely that we'll get green. The next one that would be likely would be pink and blue is the least likely. So we can see that it's easy to compare using a probability model. Now it's your turn. There's a jar with 500 candies in the jar. All of the candies are the same size and shape, meaning when you reach in, they're all gonna feel the same. In the jar, there are 25 grape candies, 150 lemon candies, 75 lime candies, 200 orange candies, and 50 strawberry candies. You will select one candy at random. You need to determine the probabilities that the candy you select is grape, lemon, lime, orange, or strawberry. So you're gonna pause the video, complete this probability model, and then come back to see my work. Good luck. Welcome back. Here's our solution. We wanna know, selecting one random from a jar of 500, what are the probable outcomes for each flavor of candy? Let's start with the grape. We know that we have 25 grape candies in a jar of 500. I'm going to use my calculator. 25 divided by 500 and write our grape pro probability as a decimal. 5 hundredths or 0 0.05. So seeing as this is to two decimal places, I'm going to write all of my probable outcomes as a decimal to two decimal places. Moving on to lemon. We have 150 lemon candies in a jar of 500. In your calculator, 150 divided by 500. Our lemon, our probable outcome is 0 0.30. Let's move on to lime. 
we have 75 lime. In a jar of 500, 75 divided by 500 gives us lime probable outcome 0 0.15 or 15 hundredths. Orange, we have 200 orange candies in a jar of 500 candies. 200 divided by 500 gives us an orange probability of 0 0.40 or 40 hundredths. And our last, we have 50 strawberry candies in a jar of 500 candies. 50 divided by 500 gives us a strawberry probability of 0 0.10 or 10 hundredths. Looking at our probability model, we can see that it's very easy to compare the probable outcomes and see that orange is the most likely to occur and grape is the least likely to occur. So you could say to somebody, you have a 5% chance of getting a grape or a 40% chance of getting orange. All right, your turn. Here's another version of a probability model that you're gonna answer. It could see like this on your state or uh, test in your classroom. State test or test in your unit test. A school has 80 balloons to decorate their gym for prom. Of the 80 balloons, 12 are black, 48 are silver, and 20 are gold. All the balloons are the same size and shape. A student will choose one balloon at random. Determine the probabilities that the student will pick a balloon that is black, silver, or gold, and select one probability for each row in the table. So here's where you pause, you find the probabilities, make your best answer choices, and then come back to see mine. Good luck. Welcome back. Let's review our solution. So we have balloons in a gym. We're gonna pick one at random out of 80 balloons. We're gonna start with pink, and then we'll go to silver and blue. We know that we have a ratio here for our probable outcome and our whole possible outcomes are 80. There's 80 balloons every time we select. So if we select just one, we're gonna say that we know that we have pink first, 12 are pink out of the 80. So 12 divided by 80, let's write, use our calculator and write that as a decimal. 12 divided by 80 is 15 hundredths or 0 0.15. I can see that there isn't a decimal here that's 0 0.15. The only decimal is this and that's not equivalent. So let's write this as a percent. To write it as a percent, we're gonna move the decimal point, point two spaces to the right making this 15%, which I can see is this choice right here. So we'll select that. So the probability of picking pink randomly when you pick one balloon is 15%. Let's move on to silver. There are 48 silver balloons out of a group of 80. 48 divided by 80, 0 0.6. I can see that that's the only decimal that doesn't match. So let's write this as a fraction, 6 tenths. Still not up here. Let's write this in simplest form, both divisible by two. Six divided by two is three, 10 divided by two is five, three fifths, and there's my answer. So silver is a three out of five chance of being pulled when we take one at random. And then let's do blue we can see that there are 20 of our 80 balloons that are blue. 20 divided by 80, written as a decimal, is 0 0.25, and I can see that that is right here. So that's our chance of getting blue. So my strategy was to write each probable outcome as a fraction and then go to a decimal and look to compare. You could have written them all as fractions, simplified fractions, and then gone to a decimal or a percent. So it's all personal choice and preference, but this is the completed probability model, noting that this option here was there as a distractor. They were hoping that you might confuse this for a percent. So remember when you divide, you get a decimal, there's another step to go to percent. And that's probability models. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math. 
where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.